itself against the elements is a season of coughs, sneezes, and sniffles. Now, studies of common winter illnesses like the cold and the flu show some interesting stats. The average adult will have between two and four colds a year, according to the CDC. On average, more than 200,000 people in the U.S. are hospitalized each year for symptoms associated with the flu. Now, exercise helps prevent a cold or the flu. Recreational athletes are shown to be at a lower risk of getting these illnesses. Meanwhile, hard training or pro athletes like Brent have a greater risk because the intense exercise may actually lower the efficiency of your immune system. Kids are especially vulnerable to the cold and flu, but they also come down with other infections you're probably not familiar with. Joining me now is Dr. Keon Hood. He's from the Pediatric Emergency Department at St. Peter's University Hospital. Dr. Hood, thanks for coming and really appreciate it. My pleasure. Happy to be here. All right, so it's that time of year, right? Kids are getting sick, they're getting colds, they're getting the flu. Parents are all worried. I want to talk about some of the most common illnesses that people might see this time of year. And one of the mm -hmm. big ones is bronchiolitis. Who gets that? What, what, what age group? Bronchiolitis, which is synonymous with RSV, or respiratory syncytial virus is actually a, a viral illness of the lower respiratory tract and kids between the ages actually kids under age two are the most commonly affected children all right so so parent gets that when you know they're home their kid has the sniffles or they get a little cough and how do they know if their child has bronchiolitis and is it something that they have to worry about well initially it starts out with cough and congestion and so sounds like and, and looks just like the common cold but over the next several days it can develop into wheezing difficulty breathing they can have really labored breathing and look very sick at which point they obviously need to see you know immediate medical attention all right so some of the warning signs where a parent might say boy you know what I got to take my kid right to the hospital now exactly if they're retracting you know which is you know the ribs kind of pulling in or if they're you know turning cyanotic sometimes their lips can turn blue right um, well blue is usually not a good color yeah, in a child, not a good right? color at all. <laughs> exactly. all right all right moving on another thing parents are always get crazy about this time of year is ear infections oh my child has an ear infection how do we know when you look in the ear you got a kid's crying screaming how do you know a, a, a bad ear from a normal looking right. ear a normal ear, you'll see the eardrum, it'll be nice and curved and it'll be clear. You'll see the little bony landmarks in there. Mm. Uh, in, in ear infection, you'll actually see a red, bulging, you know, inflamed ear. It's pretty obvious, you know, to the eye of a, of a trained pediatrician. Right. Now, when you get that, parents are like, I need antibiotics, I need antibiotics, right? They come demanding antibiotics. W right. What are we doing with that these days? Over the past several years, there's now uh, developed a wait and see approach. Uh, generally, in the past, they just prescribed antibiotics in most cases, but now there's been a lot of resistance to antibiotics developing because of the overuse of them. So now, generally, what we do is we wait and see. We watch them for a few days. If the symptoms worsen over the next few days or they don't improve over several days, then we consider starting antibiotics at that point. All right, and that's an important message, and I want parents to get that because, you know, you shouldn't be demanding antibiotics. Most times, let the doctor, he's really doing the best care for you. The third thing I wanted to talk about was croup. Right. And this is something that really frightens uh, parents, and I want to you listen to the sound of croup because it's very scary if we could get that up right now <coughs> it's more than just a cough we called it the, the barking sound of like a seal right exactly, exactly. so what causes it and what do people need to know about that um, there's several different viruses the most common virus is parainfluenza virus that causes it and it's inflammation of the upper airway and it causes a narrowing of the upper airway and that's why you get the barking cough and that strider sound that you just heard and it can and, be very scary for patients and, and the treatment at home parents can give uh, humidified air they can either do that by um, putting them over a cool mist humidifier taking them outside on a cool night uh, if it's damp um, and lastly they can uh, steam up the, the bathroom with hot water from the shower the old-fashioned way that's right and the old-fashioned <laughs> way when they used to come to the ER they'd call we would tell them listen on the drive over lower the window put your kids face near the window because that cool air is also exactly. very very helpful exactly. all right yeah, it works it still works dr. Yep. Keon hood thanks so much really oh, my appreciate pleasure. You Thank coming. you for having me great to see you Coming up, Kevin Sorbo was once the strongest man on TV, but now Hercules is breaking his silence about the illness that nearly killed him. His story may save your life, so don't miss this powerful Doctorvention. Next. This portion of Dr. Steve is brought to you by St. Peter's University Hospital, New Brunswick, New Jersey.